Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and also distinguished uh, uh, panelists here. It's really a great honor to be in Toronto. Uh, this is a marvelous city, and uh, uh, I really welcome this debate. I think it's uh, uh, Mr. McMaster has just pinked the dark, painted dark China, <laughs> China very dark picture here. Uh, but what I think, you know, maybe we have to look at it objectively. Well, just give an example. I have, I can have tell you a personal story. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm the person who have lived through the Cultural Revolution. Uh, when I was, uh, you know, 40 some years ago, I was working in the countryside and making five cents a day. But 35 years ago, I come to Canada. The first city I come is Toronto. I studied at the University of Toronto. It's a great, great university. And you know, the first day I, I went into class, somebody said, come to me, so can I touch you? I said, no, why not? Then he touched me. <laughs> he said, oh, I touched someone from Red China. Oh, from Red China, it's so scary. So I don't th hope that kind of scaring will come back. I'll tell you what, the reason why. I have a three proposal to make. The first, China is a great beneficiary of interna liberal international order. Since China joined the, you know, opened up, actually the U.S. set up these wonderful you know, liberal orders, including United Nations, World Bank, IMF, WTO, you name it. China embraced them all. So that uh, since the last four decades, can you believe it? China has lifted 800 million people out of poverty. Actually, that accounts more than 10% of the global population. And also corresponding to 70% of the global poverty reduction. So Laura Summers, the former president of Harvard, came to our think tank about two months ago. And he said that the, the transformation in China probably will go down history as a process larger than the Industrial Revolution. So I think that uh, since China joined the WTO, China's GDP has gone up 10 times because China embraced liberal international order. And also, China is the largest trading nation of over 100 countries, benefiting from Chinese economic activity. China also contributes over 35 of the GDP growth of the, of the world. So it's become an engine of the world economy. So China is the become not the second largest economy in the world. China every year has 150 million tourists travel around the world, spend 200 billion for the local economy. China since it opened up has sent over four, uh, six million students over, over the world, including Canada, such a great country. Second, China is a great contributor to liberal international order. China is now, you know what? China is actually the second largest donation to the United Nations. Also the second largest peacekeeping sending country among the permanent council members. Also China has actually committed to the Paris Court Agreement. US has backed off. China has didn't avoid its responsibility and the duties. And uh, for moreover, China has actually set up an Asian Investment Infrastructure Bank. Actually, you know what, this has been embraced by the global. You know, Canada was the member, UK is a member, France is a member, Germany is a member. It's actually 95 members. And you know what, who is the largest recipient of Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank? India. India is the recipient, largest recipient. President Xi actually launched a Belt and Road Initiative five years ago five years ago. But this is uh, still in the process of uh, you know, becoming you know, more and more uh, beneficial. But since the Belt and Road Initiative started, it has invested 40, 44 billion US dollars around the Belt and Road countries. Actually, now China has signed 127 MOU with different countries, including Italy, including Switzerland, including Luxembourg, and uh, you know, a lot of countries, and uh, 30 international lending agencies institutions. So China actually is really contributing because China has benefited from the last four decades of the, of the help from the world. It's time for China to contribute. It's time for China to, to make contributions. So Belt and Road is an initiative to do that. So it still needs a lot of help. It's not perfect. It still has an improvement. But World Bank has actually just released a report that if uh, Belt and Road is conducted, the world, the world trade cost, trading cost will cut down by one to two percent. The global economic growth will increase by zero point percent. Now the number three, China is a great opportunity for the global 
liberal system. I mean, today, JP Morgan just concluded its 15th China Global Conference in Beijing. The actual, the, the Nicholas Arkusen, the chairman of JP Morgan Asia said, the, uh, I quote him, you know, that uh, the, the China has witnessed the, 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 the transformation has the China benefit all countries in the world from the growth of Chinese economy. So that uh, China is uh, now also the opportunity, China's largest market of the world, now, now with 400 million middle class, next 10 years will be 800 million. China actually has established 800, 850,000 companies in China. US has set up 68,000 companies in China. China is the largest market in the world, and the China's export, Canada actually, today's Global Mail said, Canada for the last 12 years, export China has increased 12%, last year 18%. So it's a great market for Canada. Thank you.